We're going to talk about growth, one of the biggest and most important concepts. It's also the one where we have to do some calculations because our intuitions completely fail. Growth rate of 5 or 10% per year doesn't seem like a big deal, except over a longer time span. If you grow your skills by 5 or 10% per year, that's maybe not transformative in any single year, but that means after about 10 years, you've doubled your skills. That is a big difference. Slow, steady growth in so many things is a great long-term strategy. Now, because it's slow and but powerful, most people don't appreciate the force of steady growth year after year. We need to use some math. We'll start with a couple questions and right at the beginning, note they are actually related. First question, if an economy has GDP of 10 million and grows at 5%, what will be GDP after 15 years? Next question, if you save $500 and that's invested and grows at 5% each and every year for 15 years, how much is that going to be worth? Now, obviously these are related to different things, but it's the same basic process, steady growth that compounds. Now, how do we solve this problem? As often the case, we break it down into little parts. Each little part we can manage. I'm not smart enough to do it all at once, but bit by bit, I can work it through. Calculate growth after 15 years. I start, after, I start off calculating growth after just one year. If GDP is 10 million and grows at 5%, then after one year, how much is GDP gonna be? I know it's 5% of 10 million, and then add that little slice to the original 10. Similarly, if I have 500 and that grows at 5%, after one year, how much do I have? Well, 5% of 500, add that to the original. In each case, what happens after 15 years? Well, I'm just gonna do that again and again. After one year, I have an answer, then how much is it gonna be worth after two years? Well, it will be one plus 5% multiplied by one plus 5% again. It's just the same problem. I'm going to start with a number, add 5%, get another number, do that 15 times. Now, yeah, that is a lot of button pushing on a calculator. Maybe you don't want to do that. You might want to say, hey, is there an easier way? Yes, there is, but it takes more math. So I'll talk you through this because compounding, just doing the same thing again and again, is the basically the only fact we need to figure out a whole bunch of different formulas. They may look a little ugly. Okay, a lot ugly. But they're actually perfectly straightforward. Start with Z dollars, and that's gonna grow at a rate R. Where problem might set Z is $10 million in GDP, or Z is $500 in the bank, and R could be 5% or could be something else. So Z dollars growing at a rate R. What is that gonna be after one year? That were increased by that percent. So in our formula, that's R times Z. And I have the original value Z. So after one year of growth, I have Z times one plus R dollars. After two years, I don't do anything new. I just solve recursively. Start with an amount Z. At the end, get Z times one plus R. But this time, the new Z was already Z times one plus R. So after two years, I have Z times one plus R times one plus R. And I can simplify that formula to write it as Z times one plus R squared after two years. Do that a few more times, start to figure out, oh, maybe there's some kind of pattern going on. Yeah, yeah there's a pattern. After T years, I would have Z times one plus R to the T power. So after 10 years, I would put in T equals 10. After 15 years, T equals 15. Now, one of the things to notice here is the answer depends on Z in a very simple multiplicative way. If you know how $1 grows after two years, then you know how any other amount would grow, whether 100 or 10,000 or whatever. In math notation, I can take Z outside the parenthesis. Just remember math rules about percentages. 5% is 0 0.05 as a decimal. 10% is 0 0.10 as a decimal. 2% is 0 0.02, etc. And if that's too much calculation for you, and honestly, I can't do powers in my head, most people cannot, 
you might want a simple approximation that you can do in your head just to be able to think a problem through and even in a very approximate way. That's the rule of 70. Earlier, I wanted to figure out how GDP would grow after 15 years. That's 10 million times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the 15th power. I cannot do those polynomials in my head. If I want to do that in a calculator, I turn my phone to landscape mode. You do it in a spreadsheet. There are a lot of options, but you might want a simpler way, and that's the rule of 70. The rule says the initial amount will double after about 70 divided by r years. So really the only complication here is we're going to keep the percent as a regular number. Do not pre convert here. 5% is not 0 0.05, it's just the number 5. So about how much time does it take to double an initial investment at a 5% rate? Well, 70 divided by 5 is 14, so about 14 years to double the initial investment at a 5% growth rate. If the interest rate were 10, then the investment would double in 70 divided by 10, 7 years. If the interest rate or the growth rate is 3.5%, the initial investment will double in, let's see, what's 70 divided by 3.5? That's 20. Later, you can check your answers. You can calculate and figure out how good is the approximation. Hey, there's a homework assignment. I love homework. Don't you love homework? No? no. Sorry. Not sorry. Homework's good for you. All right, let me note a few complications. Start with a little terminology you might hear. If you listen to the news or you hear people in the finance industry, they'll talk about a basis point. A basis point is one one hundredth of a percentage point. So 1% of 1%. 25 basis points is one quarter of one percentage point. So if the interest rate changes from 3% to 3.25%, that's a 25 basis point increase in the percentage. Some people just say BIPs, talk about 50 BIPs or 25 BIPs or one BIP. Now, the reason you and I don't ordinarily work with basis points is because you and I are dealing with amounts of money where one basis point don't make no difference. If I got 100 bucks in my bank account, then a basis point is one penny. Yeah, one penny more or less ain't gonna change nothing in my life. On the other hand, if you work for a major financial institution, then you know a hundred million dollar transaction, a basis point or two adds up. Fancy people tend to worry about BIPs. Next complication, if you've ever read the fine print of a financial contract, like a credit card agreement, you might see something about the rate of compounding. Annual compounding is where an amount of money grows by one plus r after one year. But there could be semi-annual compounding where after six months you get half the interest and another six months they compound it again. Or they could do that each quarter. So after three months you get one quarter of r, after another quarter you get another, etc. After a year the initial investment would grow by one plus r divided by four to the fourth power. Now you could do that every month, in which case it's one plus r over 12 to the 12th power. Heck, you could do it 360 times. It would be one plus r over 360 to the 360th power. You could even, and here's some little math wizardry, compound an infinite number of times. That would converge to something involving the number e. I hope you remember that crazy number e. E is this odd, irrational, transcendental number, first used by mathematicians John Napier and William Outred in the early 1600s. Jacob Bernoulli derived it, Euler popularized it, E is the limit of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power as x goes to infinity. Now, it turns out E pops up in any number of completely different places. It's kind of a wackadoodle thing. It's the infinite sum of 1 over x factorial. It comes up as the expected minimum number of uniform zero one draws needed to sum to more than one. It's the area under the curve one over x. From one to e, that area is equal to one. Anyway, sometimes we write the number um, e to the r power. Sometimes we write exp bracket r. That's if the stuff in the superscript is important enough to get the full font size. The opposite of E is a natural log. 
So if I take the natural log of e to some number x, the result is x. So the natural log is the inverse of the exponential function, or e. And that's why we often take logs when showing the graph a number that grows exponentially. But let's get down to details. How does compounding, different compounding rates change the outcome? What's the difference after a year, whether money grows by annual compounding or semi-annual compounding or whatever rate, even infinite compounding? You can just do some math. If I compound once a year at a 5% rate, then I get 1.05 at the end of the year. If I compound twice, then after six months, I get 2.5%. And after the next six months, I get 2.5% of the original 2.5% as well on top. So I'm left with 1.050625. It's a little bit more. If I compound it four times, I get 1.05094. If I compound 12 times, or 250 times, or 360 times, I get a bit more. Now, why 360, not 365? A little known or underappreciated fact, in a lot of finance applications, people still use 360, because it's close to daily. Now, you might ask, do, do, do folks on Wall Street know there are more than 360 days in a year? Yeah, but tradition. In the old days, before calculators, it was a little easier to use 360 days. Even going back to the ancient Babylonians, they figured out there were about 360 days in the year, and then a bit more. But that's why we have 360 degrees in a circle. Thank you, Babylonians. But anyway, sorry for that little diversion. As you compound at a higher frequency, you get an increasing amount, but by less and less each time. So it's converging. 1.05, 1.050625, you know, it's on and on and on. Those increments get smaller and smaller. Compound an infinite number of times, at the end of the year, I'd be one, left with 1.051271. Well, decimal goes on and on and on forever, because E is a transcendental number. But back to the question, do ordinary people care? No, not really. I mean, if you put $100 in the bank, You'd have $105 at the end of the year if it's compounded once. Or you'd have $105.12, almost 13 cents, if we're compounded an infinite number of times. That 12 cents probably ain't gonna change ain't gonna change my life, not gonna change your life. Ordinary people, it don't matter, but fancy people who have a lot of money, well, that's, they're gonna watch every little bit there because those numbers add up. If you work at a bank, you will have to pay attention to rates of compounding. But it's just some math, it's easy enough.